ladies and gentlemen, today I'll be building a tiny yet powerful mini ITX gaming PC. So we're gonna be building this PC inside this super compact case from Inwin. So this is the A1 Plus. It's a mini ITX tower that comes with a built-in 80 plus gold certified power supply. We got two 120 millimeter RGB fans and a built-in Qi charger on the top. So you can actually wirelessly charge your smartphone. So why are we building this PC today, you might ask? Well, Xbox Game Pass for PC has a game available now called Grounded in which the player is the smallest we have ever seen. So naturally, they challenged us to build a super tiny PC to play it. Make sure to click the link below to learn more about Grounded and Xbox Game Pass for PC. You know guys, it's been a while since I've done a mini ITX PC, so I'm super hyped for this build. These are the parts I'll be using for it. Starting with the processor, I decided to go with Intel's new 10th gen processors. I'm throwing in the i5-10600K, a 6-core 12-thread processor, and since this is a mini ITX build, I went with an ASUS ROG Strix Z490i. It has support for two M.2 SSDs, onboard Wi-Fi, and it's got two RGB headers, which is needed to control the RGB fans and the underglow from the case. To cool the CPU, I decided to go with an air cooler this time around to make sure it fits inside the case, of course, but more importantly, I want to change it up a bit. I wanted to go with something I've never really used before in previous builds, so I'm actually really excited to test out the performance of this. And since we are going with an air cooler, we have to go with low profile RAM, but I also have to make sure it has some RGB in it. Hence why I'm throwing in the katanas that I recently got from Antec. We got total 16 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz, and it's going to look really good inside the build. Now for the graphics card, I wanted to get the most powerful card I can while staying under the power limit and clearance. I found that the MSI Duke RTX 2080 is the perfect fit. With this card, we are not only able to game maxed out in 1080p, but we can even game comfortably in 1440p as well. And finally, for storage, we're keeping it simple with a single 2TB M.2 SSD from Intel. But these are pretty much all the parts we're going to be using for the build. With that said, let's begin. All right, first thing we're going to do is pop the motherboard out of the box. Also take out any necessary things we're gonna be using at the end. We do need the Wi-Fi extender, obviously, to connect to Wi-Fi. We're not gonna use any SSDs or hard drives, so we don't need any of these cables. But we will need the front panel extender cable. This comes in very handy. And that's pretty much it. All right, next step is to pop the CPU in the socket. So I'm gonna pull on this lever. Every CPU has a gold triangle. For this one, it's right here on the bottom right. It's very tiny, but if you look closely, you can see it. We're gonna match the orientation of that triangle to the triangle right on the actual CPU cover. So as you guys can see, this one's labeled on the bottom left. And if you pop the cover open, you will see a small little circle where the triangle is supposed to be. So that's another indicator of how to install your CPU. So I'm gonna grab the CPU by its sides and gently lower it while aligning the triangles together. I'm gonna let the CPU fall in place. I'm not gonna touch anything on the surface. And then I'm gonna lower down the cover. And this black plastic's gonna pop right off. So next thing I wanna do is install the M.2 drive. So we're gonna have to remove this heat shield in order to get access to the M.2 slot on the motherboard. So I'm gonna go remove these screws. Remove the heat shield. While I'm removing the heat shield, I'm gonna peel off this plastic here, just in case I don't forget it. And here is our M.2 slot. So we're gonna grab our M.2 SSD, make sure the gap matches the notch on the actual slot, and we're gonna slide it in. And then we're gonna hold down the drive while we screw it in place with the provided screws that come with the motherboard. And then we're ready to close it back up, but make sure to peel the sticker on the thermal pad. All right, next it's time to install the CPU cooler. And since we're using an 1150 series socket for the CPU, we're gonna be using this bracket instead. So we're gonna flip the motherboard over and insert this in the back. Just like that. Next thing I'm gonna do is put these washers on the screws. After the thumb screws are on there, we're going to install this bracket, and this is pretty much what the cooler gets mounted on. So one on the right and one on the left, just like that. And finally, we're gonna have to secure these in place using the provided thumb screws. 
So this next step is very important. Before we place the CPU cooler on the CPU, we gotta make sure and see if it has thermal paste or not. So we're gonna peel off the sticker. Most coolers have thermal paste already pre-applied, but this cooler unfortunately does not. However, they did provide thermal paste with the packaging. So I'm gonna grab my thermal paste and put a little bit in the center. This is enough if you guys are going with the P dot method. However, I like to spread my paste. So I grab a spreader and spread it evenly across the IHS. It's also satisfying for me. So that's, a, that's another reason why I do it. Beautiful. All right, now we're ready to install the cooler. So I'm gonna lower this down while making sure these screws over here align with the thumb screws up top. All right, looks like it's seated. Making sure we are tightening this evenly. A few hand churns and then swap to the other screw. A few hand churns and so on and so forth. So next thing I wanna do is install the RAM. So I'm gonna lower these tabs and make sure that the gap on the actual RAM sticks matches the notch on the RAM slots. Once they're perfectly aligned, lower it down and just use both of your hands to snap it in place. Now, if you guys have four DEM slots and only two RAM sticks, then refer to the manual to find out what RAM slots to occupy first. It's usually A1 and B1. The next thing I'm gonna do is install the fan, but as you guys can see, there is a little bit of a clearance issue with those RAM sticks. It is kind of pushing the fan towards the top a little bit, so we're missing out on maybe a centimeter of coverage for the bottom heat sink. Yep, I think we're able to make it actually. It's pushing on this ram stick just a little bit, but I think, I think we're gonna be okay. So last thing you have to do is install these brackets and secure the fan to the heat sink. Voila, we are good to go. Now the case does come with two fans, like I said, but it does have room to mount two additional fans on the bottom for intake, which I'm going to do. I'm gonna take advantage of, of as much airflow as I can, obviously to keep the temps low in there. So I'm gonna throw in a couple of these uh, Lee and Lee fans in there as well. You know what, I just realized that we can daisy chain all of these Lee and Lee fans. So in order to keep things simple and consistent, I'm actually gonna swap these two fans and put in two more of the BR Digitals from Lee and Lee. That way everything's hooked up to the same RGB header and it just makes life easier. And the last fan is being held up by four screws which can only be accessed through the back. So before we put in the new fans, let's go ahead and add the two fans on the bottom for intake. This entire bottom piece is being held up by four screws in the corners, so let's go ahead and take those off as well. Oh, so that's how the lighting works underneath here. So they added an RGB strip inside here and the uh, lighting bounces off the white plastic to give it a nice underglow. All right guys, so a change of plans. Unfortunately, I won't be able to use the Lee and Lee fans because I can only hook up three fans to the five volt RGB header. And since we're installing four in the case, one of the fans is gonna be without any RGB lighting. But luckily I got one of these laying around, the Antec Prism Cooling Matrix. It's basically two 120 millimeter fans just combined into one. But the cool thing about this is that it actually comes with a hub. And with this hub, I can plug in five fans and I can even control the lighting up to five fans because it comes with five of the five volt RGB headers. So yeah, this will go on the bottom and then I'll add two additional prism fans for the rear and then one in the back. So I'm gonna place the fans facing down, that way it's intake. All right, so that is done, that's what it looks like. Two fans as intake, pulling in air inside the case. All right, so now we're ready to put back the bottom piece. Just make sure to run the fan cables through the hole cut out inside the case right over here. And then we're just gonna lower this piece down. And finally, just put back the screws. All right, now it's time to install both of the 120 millimeter fans inside the case. We're gonna start off with the one in the back side first because that's the easiest. So what I'm gonna do is run the cables through this cutout over here. 
And we're gonna use this fan as an exhaust. That way we have two fans as intake and two fans as exhaust. Also, we're not installing any SSDs, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these SSD trays as well to kind of just give us more space to work with cable management. All right, so we're almost ready to lower the motherboard down the case, but we do have this cable cover over here on the side of the power supply that's kind of blocking off an inch. So to make my job a lot easier, we're gonna go ahead and remove this as well, just for the time being until the motherboard is secured to the tray. Also, before I lower the motherboard in there, I'm gonna try and connect as many cables as I can to the board itself, because once it's in there, it's gonna be pretty difficult to reach in and plug in cables. So I'm gonna start off by plugging in the front panel connectors. Gently lower the board inside, making sure the IO shield goes down first. Why wow, does it tight fit? Oh my God. Wow, that was, that was a bit challenging, not gonna lie. So I'm gonna take this time to make sure that none of the cables down there are being squished by the motherboard and that all the cables are still plugged in, while also making sure that the motherboard holes align with the standoffs from the case. All right guys, I can't believe it, but we are almost done. All I gotta do is install the exhaust fan in the rear and then put on the GPU and we are good to go, so. And last but not least, we're gonna be installing the RTX 2080 inside here. Before that, we gotta remove the bracket in the back. All right, will it fit? Let's test it out. It's actually the first time I am putting this in here. Oh my God. I think we can make it work. Wow. We just fit in a 2080 inside this mini ITX case. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my God. This thing is gonna be a beast. Let's plug in the uh, PCI connector cables. All right guys, moment of truth. Is it gonna boot? Let's go. Oh, I'm so nervous and excited at the same time. Oh my God, that looks so cool. Oh man, that is awesome. And it boots. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a success. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty jealous that one lucky subscriber gets to take this tiny beast home. Um, it was definitely one of the more satisfying builds I've done in a long time. And it was a bit difficult getting this up and running, but that's kind of why it was more satisfying in the end, I feel like. The PC is also really silent. On idle, we are looking at around 36 degrees Celsius on average for the CPU and about 33 degrees C on the GPU. I'm absolutely loving the RGB lighting from all the parts inside, especially the underglow. This looks so damn cool. And since I hooked up all the parts to the same 5 volt RGB header on the motherboard, I can easily change the colors using the ASUS Aura Sync software. The wireless Qi charger is also a nice bonus that comes with the case. And surprisingly, it even works with my iPhone 11 Pro Max with this bulky wallet case that supports up to three cards. So that is pretty cool. But yeah, overall, I absolutely loved building inside the Inwin A1 Plus. Eventually, I want to pick up another one and do a full custom hardline loop in there. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. But that's enough of me yapping. Let's load up Grounded and see what this baby can do. All right, let's do this. So let's go single player, new game. Oh, I get to pick a uh, character. Okay, let's go with... Let's go with Pete, he looks like a nerd. Nerds usually are the smartest and they last the longest, so. Don't let me down, Pete. Investigate surroundings. Okay, so it looks like we are in the ground somewhere. Underneath the grass, looks like this is where the roots are. 
Oh, the graphics actually look pretty cool. Look at the shadows and the lightings. Actually, I am impressed. Guys, we are running on an RTX 2080 and we are getting around 100 FPS. This is 1080p, by the way, high settings. It definitely takes some juice to run this game. All right, so we're here to analyze something. So let's analyze the grass. Oh, I see. So you analyze the stuff you pick up and then you get new recipes from it. Interesting. Oh, they're ants. Are they friendly? Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think they're friendly. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh Jesus, there's two of them after me. So the game we are playing is called Grounded. It's a new first person co-op survival game available on Xbox Game Pass for PC. Basically, players will be shrunk to the size of an ant and they will have to build, craft, fight, and hunt as they try to coexist with hordes of giant insects in this enormous, eventful, and dangerous backyard. Temps-wise, we're actually doing really good, guys. We got uh, around 70 degrees Celsius on the GPU and about 65, 60 to 65C on the CPU. And I've been playing for about 10, 15 minutes, so we're looking pretty good on temps. Also, did you guys know that you don't have to own an Xbox to play Xbox titles? I actually found this out recently. So for $4.99, you get Xbox Game Pass on PC, and that gets you access to brand new PC games, including upcoming new releases like Flight Sim, Halo Infinite, and their entire library of over 100 games, which is pretty cool. All right, so that is pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let me know what you think about the PC by leaving your feedback in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to pick up the Xbox Game Pass for PC. That way you can play Grounded as well and get access to over 100 games in their library. I'll drop a link to it down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'll see you very soon in the next one.